This is the Chadwick adding machine made in Japan in the 1970s. It's made of plastic. It's got seven parallel spinning wheels that you push with your fingers. Push down to add, push up to subtract. The answer readout is right there in the middle. It's got a red button on the side that clears it to zero. It says Chadwick on it. I called it the Chadwick adding machine, but I don't think that's really its name. It was sold by an American company called Chadwick Miller Importers. They existed from the 1960s throughout the 1980s. As far as I can tell, Chadwick was an importer of any random stuff they could get from Japan. Whatever they could find, they put the Chadwick logo on it and sold it. If you search on eBay for Chadwick, you get a lot of fancy China wear. Their most popular item seems to be this ridiculous looking pitcher with U.S. presidents on it. It's hard to tell who in Japan actually made this thing. The exact same design was also sold as the Solo Handy Adding Machine and also the Neckerman Haushalt Calculator. My guess is that somebody in Japan decided to make it and made separate deals with Chadwick, Solo, and Neckerman, and probably others, to sell it in various places around the world. I don't know if you can tell, but this thing is small. It can't really fit in your pocket because it's so thick, but it's about the size of a soda can, or a can of tomatoes. It's also very light, much lighter than the tomatoes. Hold on a second. That's actually my only complaint about this machine. It's a bit too small. It's pretty easy to accidentally bump the wrong wheel and mess up your answer by mistake. If you want to add a number, you just find the white number in the digit you want and push the wheel down to the bottom. Like 1138 plus 429 is just 1138. And then 429. You can dial in the digits in any order you want since the carries are all done for you. The button on the side will reset it to zero so you can do another one. The red numbers are for subtracting. Machines throughout the 20th century used what was called subtraction by complements. That means to subtract some number, you would add some other number and then either ignore or suppress an extra carry. Those machines use what's called a nines complement. That means the two numbers on each key always add up to nine. This device isn't like that. You can see these aren't nine complements. The uh, white one plus the red one always equals ten. To subtract, you look at the red numbers and you push it up rather than down. It works perfectly and you have to think a lot less than a machine that uses nines complements. Here's a 503 minus 279. The wheels have some springs in them so they click from one position to the next. You can hear and feel the springiness inside when you turn the wheels. The button has a great feel to it too. The button somehow manages to feel big and heavy even though it's all just this little plastic thing. You know, it may be just a cheap little plastic thing, but it's actually a really well-made machine. The 1970s was basically the end of the mechanical adding machine industry. This device was among the last in a long line of machines with this same basic idea. I did a video about the Todd machine from the 1920s, which was one of the first, but there were lots more in between. These guys are like a miniature version of the whole story of the 20th century, from American-made heavy steel machines in the 1920s, to cheap plastic imports from Asia in the 70s. The mechanical computing industry changed the world and then promptly died forever. This little guy was one of the last ones. It's not really original in any way, but it does the job. The design is almost perfectly minimalist. It's like somebody took the old classic designs and stripped out everything they possibly could until only the pure essence remains. It's a perfect example of how they say true design isn't about adding things, but taking things away. So congrats to the Japanese folks who built this thing. You made a great machine. The last and perhaps finest expression of this type of mechanism. Sadly, your product got other people's names slapped on it, so those who loved it would probably never really know who created it. Your achievement was probably never really used that much anyway and was replaced immediately with superior electronics technology. But now, today, you are finally getting the recognition you deserve in an amateur video that very few people will watch. I'm just doing my part.